Like you said, he's got three rings, right? And just to clarify, none of those rings are with Connor, right? Is Frazier Minton going to have more points than Sapkowski this year? Frazier Minton sucks at hockey. This guy might not even be an NHLer, so we got to settle down on that one. I laid no, minus 160 on will they show her holding a drink in her hand. They are two points behind the St. Louis Blues in the wild card, and they are... Oh, the Blues are dog water. The Blues suck. And the Blues like, are the worst <laughs> of those four teams that I mentioned by a mile. And that's they're they're not a good hockey team care like have some set of balls have some response have some pride for what the hell goes on on the ice it's so absurd i'm looking forward to the parade um, but that's going to be later in the year i'd rather have so money in that than have arvid soda balls i would rather stack a bunch of garbage that i have in the corner of my room over here than have arvid soda balls in that he's all March 27th, welcome back to Edgework presented by Stacks. I'm Zach Phillips, joined here on this fine Wednesday morning by Matt Albert, Rob Pozzola, and no Alex Moretto, booted from the Wednesday show. Too many losers on these Tuesdays. He keeps trying to put it on Russell and saying, it's, it's Russell's losing, it's Russell who's losing. Maybe he's a part of the mojo. Maybe that's the problem. I don't know, but we had to kick him out of here, finally get some winners going on this, uh, on this Wednesday. Only two games ahead of us, but... We'll break some both those down, maybe look at ahead to some futures before we can get into any of that. I want to remind people, if you haven't already, you should be signed up at the Stacks Betting Exchange. If you're sick of getting limited and profiled, Stacks is a unique sports betting exchange that offers higher limits and better pricing. Stacks offers a fair and real-time marketplace for users to bet on the outcome of sporting events, offering better odds in a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace. Stacks is the best option for anyone who wants to wager on live sports, so make sure to add Stacks to your list of outs and sign up today. You can get commission-free trading when you sign up now. The option is yours at Stacks. Rob, you said it. You said that that's it. We got to get Moretto out of here. I mean, we went three and six last night. Brings our season record to 315, 330, and 12. 2.6% ROI here now. 16.8 units were up on the season. Enough was enough for you? It's important to keep the momentum going into the playoffs because we know we're going to give back like 14 units in the playoffs like we do every year here on Edgework. So we got to <laughs> we got to stay above water going into the playoffs. Three and six, not acceptable. However, I will say all the games yesterday involving playoff teams or playoff bound teams, I swear the wrong team won every single game. Like typically speaking, you get a few where you look at the, the you know, the expected goals metrics afterwards and you're like, ah, okay, that, you know, sure. There was like every game involving a playoff team yesterday where the, the wrong team, quote unquote, wrong team won. So it was certainly an interesting night on the ice, but uh, two games tonight and uh, maybe some futures and some props we can talk about as well. Well, we will get into those, but I'll give Albert a minute there. I mean, this guy looks like he just walked out of the Madison Square Garden Rangers shop to come on the show. Rangers hoodies, Rangers hats, and Jordan says, oh no, you didn't boot Albert. Now we got to hear about the Rangers <laughs> win. Albert, take your 30 seconds. Tell us about the Rangers. Oh, man. Um... Well, you know, it's been a little better if Rob didn't lead that off with the wrong team won every game. Um, it, <laughs> I did, knew what I was doing, like Albert. A, I, I know. It did, it did feel like a coin flip. And then I go look at the whole expected goals thing, and I'm like, this is perfect. Like, I get to stick it to Moretto, who's, like, dead in the ditch somewhere after last night. I don't know. Throwing shade at Russell on Tuesdays, throwing shade at me on a Wednesdays, goes, like, 1-12 and 12 last night. Like, Rangers win. We're, yeah, see, like... He, he's not going to stop, right? Like, at this point, it's kind of a bit on his end. Um, he, he's got to do that after to distract everybody from the fact that he went, like, 0-6 yesterday. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it was... Philly's starting to worry me if we actually draw them round one. Like, they played us, obviously, tight last night. They played us tight the game before. Like, they just kind of stick around. Um, thank you, 2-4. and four, So much better. Um, but, mm -hmm. yeah, it was... Uh, it was certainly an interesting game. Like neither goalie could save anything. Um, but no, it was, it was a fun one. Um, I mean, look, you look at it, right? Like we were on the Panthers and the under that goes Bruins and over because that's how those have gone literally the entire season long. Um, mm -hmm. But like Rob said, like you definitely could have gotten some other results in different games, but yeah, it is what it is. We're on the Wednesday. No Moretto. <laughs> no Moretto. Uh, yeah. Moretto will be carrying around the, uh, 
carrying around the adult safe hockey league trophy around king city today or wherever toronto wherever that it was that they played and won in the parade while he's absolutely yeah. hammered so uh that's that's how his day is being spent today congratulations to him and his men's league that was more important than showing up here to the wednesday edge work show i don't know about that but it is what it is we keep it moving and it's really uh, the high point of his life. Let's call it out for what it is. Yeah. Adult yeah, men's yeah. league <laughs> championship. You know, I mean, look, plays like four minutes a game as as the fourth line right winger or whatever. <laughs> uh, you know, like it's, but it is it is a great moment for him. Like he should celebrate for sure. Yes. Is Moreno the Matt Rempe of his beer league team? <laughs> One might say that he is, except Moreno's not fighting anybody, let's be real. Um, no, he's the guy that he'll also, instigate, but then like Lee skate to the bench while the rest of the team is scrapping. That's the oh, no, he's, Rob, you just he's just gonna turtle. He just goes immediate turtle on the ice. Yeah, <laughs> is Nick Cousins laying down, covering his head? Um, yeah, I don't know. Yesterday, Moretto was talking about frauds uh, and uh, the Rangers, how the Rangers were gonna turn back into frauds when it comes, to, or we're gonna be exposed as frauds when it came to the Stanley Cup playoffs this year, but. According to some people online yesterday, guys, there's uh, some fraudulent behavior based on how much money your parents had when you were growing up and whether mm. or not that actually matters for how many goals you score in the NHL, diminishing a 50-goal accomplishment there for Zach Hyman this season. Rob, did you catch any of that yesterday? I'm not, I won't necessarily bring any of it up in terms of videos or clips or anything like that. We don't want to give it too much more publicity, but any thoughts on Zach Hyman's dad paying his way to, not the NHL, mind you, but uh, 50 goals? Yeah, I, I, I caught that yesterday. I mean, I don't know what's got to be going through your head to put a video like that out there to the public. Four-minute video. You know what there's reception is going to be generally speaking uh, listen obviously zach hyman had some advantages growing up and was able to play hockey and some people just can't and whatever that doesn't diminish his what he's done this year it really doesn't mm -hmm. for every zach hyman who grew up wealthy had an opportunity there are a lot of look you know i played with players who were very wealthy that never even came close to 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 the NHL because they didn't have the work ethic. They didn't have the skill. So there's a lot of things that go into it. I, I thought that was a pretty, you know, it was, uh, it was done in bad taste. Let's put it that way. Um, yeah. I, I mean, Hyman is anyone who's watched the guy play can tell how hard he works and has worked for the majority of his career, uh, whether uh, his family grew up, you know, with the privilege or not, I, I think it's completely irrelevant. So yeah, really ignorant, I would say. Yeah, Albert, did you have uh, any opinion on what you saw yesterday? I know that you hadn't really seen uh, hadn't really seen much of that guy before, or any comments or anything. But based on the fact that pretty much a hundred percent of every part of hockey Twitter and hockey the hockey universe yesterday came against that guy, it was pretty impressive. Yeah, I mean, look, I had never even heard of the guy before the video, um, first and foremost. Second of all, who takes a four-minute video holding a phone like this? Like, that, that that's the awkward as you're doing it. Like, you have to know that it's going to go out there and just look awkward from the beginning, regardless of what the hell you're saying. Um, yeah. But I think Rob touched on the point perfectly. Like, for every kid like Hyman who maybe grew up wealthy and was kind of given all of these training advantages or whatever it was growing up, hockey parents are crazy man they'll spend so much money on their kids growing up like you're gonna have 20 kids like that in spots that don't even sniff like ncaa or top juniors let alone nhl so it's like yeah yeah you did but let's not act like that's like the golden ticket to kind of getting there right and especially like even once you hit the nhl like your parents aren't helping you once you hit the nhl like you're no. that yeah I, I don't know so it's like I didn't really get the whole point of the video. I watched about 45 seconds of it before turning it off and saying, I don't know what this is all about, but I, I didn't understand the whole point of it. Uh, he I mean, yeah. he like, should have recorded it like Kevin Weeks records his videos with like half of his face. Off. That way he could have said afterwards that it was a joke like that, that at least he could have fallen back on like, no, no, no. It was just a, because yeah. that was just like straight from the heart, complete garbage rant. And listen, yeah. everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but my opinion is that that one was a really shitty opinion, like really yeah. shitty opinion. I haven't seen something like that in a long time. Yeah, and we all know, and as much as we want to change it and we should be able to or find ways to change it, like 
hockey there's a barrier to entry there there just yeah. is naturally the equipment the ice time travel like all that kind of stuff there's a barrier to entry hopefully someday that it can be alleviated uh it, it can be made easier for kids to play but as of right now that is what it is and that's how it's been pretty much the entire time so if you haven't had some of those bounces go your way in your life whether it's been people helping you or your family being fortunate enough then like you're probably not going to be in the position to actually have that success or go on and have an opportunity and like I was just talking to Moretto about it yesterday his brother was my d partner when I was growing up playing hockey like he's not in the nhl he never played junior he never went on and did anything like just because you have money doesn't mean shit in that yep. it can get you opportunities in minor hockey when you know the coach uh, around the corner down at uh, herb carnegie arena is taking a thousand dollars to let your kid on the ice at tryouts and then taking an extra five to let him on the team but like outside of that it's not really going anywhere unless you can actually play unless you're going to work hard it's not really going to work uh and yeah, yeah it's I mean like Stephen points out Josh Doan kind of privileged like yeah <laughs> William Nylander scored 40 last night and our guy heels tweeted at me he's like well we should pump the brakes here because his dad was uh his dad was a pro so let's not celebrate this one it's like yeah yeah there's a lot of that going on tough yeah I mean like look and I'll even kind of just jump onto that one a little bit like there's one guy from my hometown who's made the NHL and I'm not gonna name names but I don't think they're the most wealthy family growing up and for every one of those, there were 50 families that had more money and their kids didn't couldn't sniff NCAA juniors, any of that, let alone NHL. So it's like, yeah. I, I don't really understand the whole point of kind of bashing the guy here, but. Wow. Look yeah. at Albert trying to pump up his hometown right there. Just yeah. No, <laughs> stuck that one right in. Trust me. I am <laughs> absolutely not. Wow. Uh, all right, let's get to tonight's games. There's only two of them, but we'll break down both. Uh, I also have to get out of here quickly after Rob. I got to go into audition for the Castaway 2 uh, movie. So that's as Mike Vivian's pointed out on Twitter. So that's what I that's coming up after this. But let's start here in Buffalo where the Sabres are hosting the Ottawa Senators. Buffalo minus 135, the Sens plus 127, and total of six and a half right across the board here in this game. Uh, Rob, do you have any opinions on this one? Do you have any opinions on where the price is currently set, where the total is? And do you have any bets? Um, I do have a slight opinion on the game, and that it's that Buffalo is a little bit overvalued. The, frankly, it's really hard for me to... I, I was in attendance in Ottawa uh, on Sunday when they hosted the Oilers. It's very hard for me to get that game out of my head because the Senators spent about 50 minutes in their, in, in their own zone in that game. And Edmonton just continued to cycle... Corpus Allo, who has had a horrible year, had a really good weekend against New Jersey, and they went back to him against Edmonton. Played really well. But I, I don't really like the Senators in that they cannot consistently cycle themselves. They're very reliant on, right now, power play, which has been going really well for them over the course of the past few weeks, and also odd man rushes, which they can generate with their top two lines. Outside of that, it's um, a bit of a challenge. My model shows a very slight edge on Ottawa. I think one of the reasons why is if we look at, let's say, the last month or so for the Sens, they have a shooting percentage which ranks fourth worst in the entire league. Where you look at the Buffalo Sabres, uh, they're scoring well above expected right now with a shooting percentage of like 11% over the last 10 games. So we have a team in Ottawa uh, who's kind of been slightly unlucky with results versus Buffalo who's maybe capitalizing a little bit more than they should based off the quality of chances that they've had. I don't like either of these teams. I priced the game in the range of Buffalo, like minus 117 fair value. So I guess the 127 at Pinnacle, 125 stacks, great numbers that stand out there. Uh, but it, it's, it's like one of those where if this was a full slate, to be honest, 10 games, something like last night where we had, you know, most of the NHL playing probably wouldn't even give a look at this game. Now, if you want some recreational action, I say it's Ottawa or nothing, but it's it's likely something I'm not going to end up on. Albert, do you uh, do you want to get involved in this game? I'm not getting involved in it, but I kind of have a lot of the same thoughts. Like you kind of look at that span, right? Like the Senators have been playing a little better than the Sabres. Sabres have certainly kind of gotten a little lucky out of there. And the Sabres just haven't been a team that I'm looking to lay like a minus 140 kind of price on like for most of the season. Um, 
just like they just play so high variance week to week kind of with the young team it's like you really don't know what you're gonna get with them so i'm not really looking to kind of lay that price on them so it would be auto or nothing i, I just don't know it, it uh, is I get a tra- tough travel spot too, Zach. Yeah. Insight points it out in the chat. Um, yeah. And Ottawa's had like a lot of shorter trips recently, right? They haven't been moving around all that much. So it's somewhat factored into the price as as are all the rest situations nowadays and the travel situations. But it is another thing that you got to take a look at with Buffalo. They haven't been good at home this year, like below 500 at home. I, and and to Matt's point, like there's just certain teams you look at prices and you're like, yeah, I don't I don't really want to lay this team this price with this team unless I I see a significant advantage here, and uh, I don't really. So it, it's Ottawa or nothing. But I mean, the Sens the Sens are like a team that uh, we've seen some mail it in specials over the the past few months with them as well, right? Where things just get out of hand when they're away from home too. So I don't know. It's a it's a ugly game, tough one. But uh, lean Ottawa here. Well, and it's we'll kind stay of similar off. to like, sorry, real quick. Like we touched on this with, I think it was Nashville a few months ago. Like it's one of those teams that if they're dogs or they're kind of around the pick em range, like you're interested in it. Once you get to them laying like a decent number as a favorite. Now, now you want to lay Nashville minus 400 every game because they're never going to lose again. But like generally one of those teams, like once you get to minus We, we one, are all Preds. We're all Preds, minus Albert. Oh no. We don't need another Moretto here. Um. But it's like once you gotta get to that price, like do you really want to lay Sabres minus one forty here, even if they are the better team kind of against Ottawa in the spot? No, not really. Um, so yeah, for me it's Ottawa or nothing, but I'm staying. Okay, well, let's go to the next game here where we got two best bets. Perfect. Uh, where you got the Tampa Bay Lightning at home against the Boston Bruins, Tampa minus one eleven, best price on the other side on the oh god, on the Bruins, plus one oh two at stacks. Uh, we see some five and a halfs kind of trending a little bit towards that six right now. Seems six is mostly available across the market. And uh, Albert, you're looking at a main market in this one. What do you got for us? So this one's pretty simple. Yesterday we played the under between the Bruins and the Panthers. I was on that as well. I have the Lightning is more of an under team than the Panthers, and you're getting a slightly better price here. So I took the under six minus 109. Um Vasilevsky, you'll definitely get him back in that kind of after getting Johansson on Sunday night. Um, for the Bruins, it must be nice being able to go from Swayman right back to Olmark. Yeah. Better price than last night. I, I'm happy with the under six here. All right. Well, we'll go with the under six minus 110. You see the best price on the under six right now on the bet stamp app at minus 105, but we're seeing some minus 115s out there as well. So for the sake of kind of dropping ourselves in the middle, we'll grab a minus 110 on the under six. And Albert saying in minus 109 is where he played it anyway. So perfect for us to track. That is our first best bet of the day. And Rob, you've got something else here too. I do. So the, just, on, just on the game itself, it's really hard to handicap this game without knowing the status of Braden Point and Victor Hedman, who missed last game. I suspect they're going to play. It seemed like it was just like day-to-day, day-off kind of things. If they don't, I'm I'm going to bet Boston as an underdog. And it's going to fly pretty quickly if you get some information on that. I know it's back-to-back for Boston. They honestly didn't even really play that well in Florida last night. Um, I had that up on the screen quite a bit last night. And Florida seemed to have a lot of offensive zone time. Boston struggled to generate chances, but you know, they, they just like find ways to win those games and they've done that in the entire year. So um, just keep an eye on that, obviously, because you have two main injuries. Um, people, you know, after I did the show last Wednesday, I got a bunch of DMs on Twitter. Like we need to go back to find, like finding those goal scorer props you were giving out last year. So <laughs> let's give this a shot. Um, it's based completely purely on value. Brad Marchand has been going through quite a, a slump in terms of goal scoring. He's got one goal in March. I think he only had two in February. This guy's shooting percentage over the past couple months is absurdly low. Like I'm talking two and a half percent. His individual expected goals is down. He's certainly not generating at the level that he did earlier on in the year. But when he does get the chances, he's not finishing. He had a great chance last night. Didn't score a goal either. We're getting into prices now here. On a very good player, very good goal scorer, going through a slump at five to two, basically plus two fifty at several spots in market. I think that's a decent opportunity to bet Brad Marchand. If we go back just one month ago and we take a game from late February and you look at where Marchand was priced, 
priced, we're looking at like anywhere between plus 160 and plus 170. So we've come a long way here. I do think the tide is going to turn eventually. His ice time is not going down. If anything, it's going up. He gets time on ice over the last several games. He played 19, almost 20 minutes against the Rangers, 18 against the Flyers, almost 21 last night. It's going to go eventually. I think it's a good value play there at plus 250 on Brad Marchand. Um, and I mean, listen, more unlikely to win than win, but we're getting into price territory now where I just don't don't agree with it. Oh, this isn't one of those like you think he's going to score like your buddies text you after. You think oh, you think he's going to score? Yeah, this is this isn't one of those where I make it minus 200, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like about, yeah. Yeah, one of those. Uh, how how do you want to play this units wise here, Rob? On the plus two fifty full unit here. So we we'll probably will go something small here, uh, maybe like forty to win one hundred type of thing. So 0.4 units for those out there. Um, Mike Bromberg in the chat, great point. First power play unit for the Bruins just hasn't been clicking lately. It NHL so streaky. It's like you know, out of nowhere you score three or four goals, it happens. Um, but yeah, I, I just I can't get behind this this price. I feel like power plays right. even more so. Like power plays either going to score like six out of fifteen, or they're going to go like one for twenty five or something, and then you'll just kind of just <laughs> revert to the other after a while. So, right. Uh, there you go. Those yeah. are our best bets for today. Uh, Rob, anything else on the on today's games? Not on today's games, but just generally speaking, like with I don't like to time the bottom of the market like I'm doing here today. So listen, I think this is a good bet, honestly. I, I think I think it should be priced closer to two to one than plus two fifty. Little bit of value there on an underdog. Oftentimes, I do like to wait for the player to snap out of the slump and then kind of get on board in the next few games because you tend to see um, just like that uptick in performance once once they get the monkey off their back, so to speak. But I do think it's a good price. If you didn't want to just monitor Marshan going forwards, this is something that I think. Like the prop market doesn't adjust like this. These prices will exist for multiple weeks now coming up. So it might be one of those where you just kind of wait it out. He pops a goal. You get on board with him in the next two or three games. We did this a lot last year with a lot of success. So just throwing that out there that like, especially NHL prop market, you're not going to see massive changes in prices from game to game. Even if guys get elevated up and down the lineup, it just doesn't tend to happen all that much. So just something out there for people to monitor. If you don't like it tonight, no worries. Just monitor his prices going forwards because I do think that if you were to bet these maybe for like the next three to four weeks, you'd probably come out ahead. Don't worry, Albert. You uh, you follow along with us here and we'll get you some units back from this season. We'll, we'll turn things around for you to get into playoffs. It'll be okay. You know what? Well, we'll be okay. You know what? Listen, the Albert slander, I've been a part of it over the years. Last Wednesday, I came on. I gave a loser. Yep. Moreto came on and gave a loser. Albert saved Albert. us from the reverse shutout, the reverse yep. sweep. So you know yep. what? Every now and then, not always, every now and then, in fact, maybe just once a month or once every couple months, he deserves some accolades and some credit. <laughs> and today's going to be the day because Albert saved us last Wednesday. So Matt, keep doing what you're doing as long as it wins. If not, then don't do that anymore. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, so the best part of this that Zach's not even mentioning is so we kind of have our side chat and like Sunday, I start going through the board. I'm like, crap, I like way too many things. Best day of the year. Mm. Of course, it's not a Wednesday, yep. right? Like That would have been great. Yeah, so that's, well, that's just kind of how it goes. But I, I mean, when I come on the show, when, when I give the picks on Saturday so that Zach can tweet them out at noon, those ones always win. As soon as I put my face on the camera, then it's just like, uh, you know. Here we go. Um, I yeah, would say so. the same, but I think I started Saturdays one in eleven this year, or something like that. <laughs> we've, so that wasn't yeah. even helping either. But we're uh, yeah. we're starting to rebound here. Yep, <laughs> we'll get it in the right direction. Uh, I got a couple things for you guys to get out of here before we uh, before we wrap up some future stuff to take a look at. Uh, you, Albert, you know you've done it. People in the chat know they've seen it. We, I introduced the Phil of the future. You know, there was a TV show when I was on, uh, when I was a kid on, on there where uh, it was called Phil of the future. And they, the guy would go and travel with his sister to the, the future, come back, change things that would happen, come back, alter the time and space. 
but I'm just using the hammer provided time machine to go ahead and try to find out information and coming back and seeing what our analysts think about whether or not these things have happened. So first of all, I mean, Rob, this one's more for Albert to answer here and determine what goes on. But uh, after Rob wins today's Wednesday bet with Marshawn at anytime goal score plus 250 and gets us in the right direction units wise, the people in the chat will demand Pizzola take over Moretto's Wednesday position full time for the remainder of the season. Albert, is this fact or is this fiction? I mean, that needs to be fact. I haven't lost a Wednesday bet <laughs> since Rob's been on the show. I mean, right. a whole one and all, right? So it's like, we, we yeah. got to keep it going. Like, I, I think people like seeing Rob here. I mean, he's kind of imitating Moretto a little bit with the Predators hat. Maybe we can get yeah, that I know. On, starting on the next show. <laughs> There's a reason um, for it. I'll get to the reason for it. But yeah. Yes. Yeah. But, you, but you yes. know, Zach, this is 100. Listen, I, you know, I run a content company in the Hammer. This is a what have you done for me lately type of business. You know, we <laughs> yeah. have a, a, a great, really great NBA handicapper on the board every day in Pips. Pips NBA. Guy wins 10 straight days in a row, has a losing day. The following day after the losing day, the amount of views on his show is going to be like half of what, what it was during the winning streak. Just people give up so easily. And if I win this Marshawn bet tonight, plus 250, great price that people are getting. Moretto went two and four on Wednesday. He says two and four. We're pretty sure it's 0 and six, but he said two and four <laughs> on, on, on the Tuesday show. Then it's a what have you done for me lately type of thing. The people will turn yep. on Moretto. They will turn on him. And uh yep. frankly, it's I mean it's long overdue if we're being if we're being honest. All right. Uh this next one, Rob, maybe you could help help Albert see things clearly here. Uh, I went ahead and I, I looked at the NHL playoffs. I looked at wh what happened, how far teams made it and everything. And I saw that the Eastern Conference Finals were featuring the New York Rangers. And they proved to Moretto that they were not fraudulent. Is this fact or is this fiction? Are Albers Rangers going to make it to the Eastern Conference Finals? Or did they make it to the Eastern Conference Finals? I think it's fiction, just probabilistically. I don't actually hate the Rangers in the playoffs. I think a lot of people will look at some of the metrics this year and, and, the, and the history for the Rangers, and they'll just generally be down on them. They could have a very good path, potentially, through the Flyers. I know Matt's scared of the Flyers. I, I mean, I guess if you're a Rangers fan, you could be scared of any team that's going to be in the playoffs. But, like, the Flyers, anyone wants to play in the Flyers in the first round relative to, like, maybe Tampa Bay for the Rangers or something like that. So the path could potentially be there. I, I got to say, though, I just I just see it unraveling, not because of the Rangers team, but because of the hex that Albert puts on the team. <laughs> like, you know what? They'll get Tampa in the first round. They'll get Tampa somehow. Albert will come on here and be like, you know, there'll be a bunch of people on like ESPN, TSN, whatever, and they're going to be breaking down the matchup, like Rangers Tampa, and it's going to get to goaltending, and they're going to make it even. And Albert's going to come on here. He's going to be like, "How can you make it even?" Vasilevsky's like minus fourteen goal save above expected this year. Justerkin's been this consistent. Boom, and then we'll get to the playoffs, and and yeah. Vasilevsky is going to pull a Bobrovsky from last year. He's going to have win four games with shutouts. Basically, that's what's going to most likely to happen for the Rangers this year. Albert comments. <laughs> You're telling me you wouldn't do that, saying, Albert? You're telling me if you saw a show <laughs> where they made the goaltending a matchup even, Vasilevsky, Shesterkin, you wouldn't be triggered by that because of the goal saved above expected numbers this year? Of course you would be. I mean, I'm not going to say that I think it's even, but I think it's close to even. Um, Just to be clear, like, I'm not afraid of the Flyers. I would just rather play, like, Detroit or Washington. Sure. It, kind of any of those teams that suck. Um. Oh, I mean, the Flyers kind of suck. Mark right. that one. I'm marking they, that one. Yeah, you can mark that one. We we have a, we have so much stuff to mark at this point. Like, I don't think there's an outcome in the playoffs that does not result in one of us looking like an idiot in about six yeah. weeks from now. Um, yeah. Wait till the people it, see it the is like, in the playoffs. Yeah, no <laughs> I hey man, if I run like I did last year in the playoffs, like the whole season will be forgotten. Um, 
but no, right? So it's like the first round, hopefully get like the flyers, or the caps, or the wings. I, I just jinx myself. Um, yeah. But like, you hopefully get one of those and kind of get through it. And it's like, uh, we can talk about the matchup with Carolina so many times. Like the matchup is there, whether they get through them again or not, like who knows, but the, the path is there. Like Rob said, like, it, it's not like you're in the central having to go through like Colorado and Dallas, if you're Winnipeg or something like that. Right. Like yep. the path is certainly a lot easier for kind of, especially whoever ends up like maybe in that Metro two spot. Like if you're Metro one and you don't win the conference, like what I've been saying for a couple of weeks is if you're going to win the Metro, you better finish top of the conference because the difference mm-hmm. between like Philly or Detroit or Washington versus Tampa is massive. Yep. Could be the Leafs in that spot at some point. If the things keep going the way they're going. Leafs are going to beat the Bruins. So, no, oh, okay. Uh, all right, God, I got I got two more for you guys. On the record, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. I got two more for you guys. Wishful thinking. Uh, um, I went to. I skipped ahead to the award ceremony uh, again. Here we've done this a few times, but this time I'm taking a, a look at a different award than I have previously, and. You know what, this year it, it was kind of interesting. We've, we've seen some leading candidates all season long, and I was expecting to see them up on stage receiving this award, but it kind of surprised me when I saw Roman Yossi accepting the Norris Trophy. Roman Yossi up on stage at the NHL Awards thanking everyone because he won the best defenseman in the NHL this year. Rob, is this fact or fiction? Oh, I would like it to be fact so bad. Um, yeah. I hope it's fact. This is why I'm wearing the Preds hat today, people. If you haven't bet Roman Yossi to win the Norris yet, there's still 40 to ones out there. Like, this is badly mispriced. And I'm not saying he's going to win, because he probably won't. But the way that the Preds have run over the past couple months, like, there's one person who's going to get the credit for that, and it's Roman Yossi. And honestly, stack up his numbers against any other defenseman in the league in pretty much any category at this point, and he's on par, basically. So I don't really know how he's priced this way. I do think there's going to be a push towards him at the end of the year if the Preds keep going down this path, which has been like unstoppable for a few months now. Great price available. I hope, I hope you're right, Zach, on this. I don't think you are. I don't think I'm going to be with my bet. But like, how do you not take a shot at forty to one at this point? Like, you're you're insane if you're not betting that price. Insane. I think we just got to make a push on this, like we have for Carberry. Like we we have flipped this thing on its head here over the last little while. Uh, we got some help from our friend Bor Lucy pushing that one, bringing it to our attention. So money's in here now. I'm in on this one. Like now you're looking online, and it feels like everyone's starting to turn into the Spencer Carberry Jack Adams Award campaign. Mm-hmm. We just got to push, Rob. We got to make a subtle push, and it'll start to catch. Like you got to tell the guys on forward progress, hey, this Roman Yossi guy in the NHL, he's doing some damage. We'll push it to all the corners of the internet and start to get some stuff going. That's the I got to call up, uh, call up my buddy from the Athletic, uh, Dom, the decision, Lucision, and have him <laughs> yeah. write an article. I, why the Preds, uh, why why Yossi deserves the the Calder and uh, excuse me, the Norris, and then it's, yeah, it'll just move from there. Yeah, so I'll, yeah. I mean, Dom is, yeah, I don't think he's gonna do that for me, but it, it'll be <laughs> no. worth it. If you do see an article from Dom come out, though, you you know where it might have came from. If you do mm-hmm. see one pop up, you know where it might have came from. Uh, Albert, what are your thoughts on uh, the Norris uh, the Norris campaign that we're pushing here for Roman Yossi? Yeah, while we're at pushing other stuff, maybe we could go get an article about Panarin wearing the heart coming up here. Oh, oh my nice. God. Um, Jesus just Christ. like that, take it on fire. Yeah. Um, Panarin to win the heart. Oh, my God. There's... It's like seven people I can name that are more deserving off the top of my head. <laughs> um, I, I don't. I, I mean, I don't think Yossi ends up getting there either. Like, I, I agree with the forty to one. Uh, I'll be the boring one here, the buzzkill, and say it's going to go to Quinn Hughes. Like, I there's going to be some definitely some Canucks winning the awards. I am not on the Spencer Carberry train. I did get talking a little while ago, so I'm hoping that one kind of comes through. Um, but wow. yeah, I just I, anti I just everything that we're cheering for. <laughs> you know what i've been anti-preds for like six <laughs> months it hasn't worked out why why, why change now right like you yeah you know what actually That's albert why don't you, how about you yeah. cheer for you cheer I'm, for I'm hughes you, you cheer for talk it exactly. yeah it, it might help I'm, us, I'm helping yeah. you guys i'm actually helping you guys out here i'm doing you a favor you don't even realize it and rob's out here yeah. like what are you doing I'm just trying to help you out um 
I, I think it does end up going to Hughes. Like, and, and I think you guys obviously do too, but I agree. The 40 to one is just too high. Yeah. Yeah. No, I uh, if I, if I had a vote now, I would give it to Hughes. Let's just make that abundantly clear. But I think that there's a path forwards here over the next month where Nashville just continues in the direction that they're going. And the, the gap that Yossi had between these other top defensemen earlier in the year, it's completely closed at this point where, you know, you pretty much look at it, whether it's just the traditional metrics or advanced metrics across the board. And he's right up there in that group right now and being priced like he has no chance to win, basically. Yeah. The other thing, too, is like, Rob, you bring up like some of the underlying metrics and stuff that you're looking at with him and compared to Hughes. A lot of what happens in the NHL is very much like, what you said here with Moretto and why he's off the show and why you're here right now, and why you'll be here moving forward is what have you done for me lately? And it's not like Hughes's play has to drop off drastically, but Yossi goes or the Preds go ballistic and Yossi's a big part of that. People might start to remember that more than anything. And like you said, we look at the schedule, there's 10 games left. 10 games feels like it could be a short amount of time. That is a month of hockey plus what they've just done. This stays uh yeah it, it could just continue to head in that direction and you know what maybe our uh, our pockets will be a little more a little more full going into the playoffs this year uh i had two more i'm gonna save one because i i didn't want to i didn't want to hear from moretto the more i think about it you know what i'm a company man and uh this is good content and we'll get some good sound bites out of moretto so we'll save the other one for next wednesday so you guys better tune in you subscribe to the channel like the stream here today turn on notifications we'll save it for next wednesday hopefully rob will be back here again then but i do have one more for today to close this one out it's, it's more topical i i saw some people talking about it uh online and i was kind of thinking like you know what this there is a possibility and so i said you know what, i'll go into the time machine and see what happens and I found out that Austin Matthews, not the only 60 goal scorer this season. I mean, he is still one away, so hopefully he does get to that mark. But the other 60 goal scorer this season was Zach Hyman. Albert, you think that this is fact or fiction that Zach Hyman hit 60 this year? I will say after yesterday, I think that there are a lot of people hoping that this is a fact. Um, yeah, that's fair. I'm going to say it's a fact. Uh, I'm. I mean, I'd love part, definitely part of that's wishful thinking. I'd love to see it. Um, but I also think like, and I don't have this in front of me, like when's the last time we had two 60 goal scorers? I don't think it happened last year. No, it ha it, it probably hasn't happened since like Solani and Bure, like in the 90s. I don't, I mean, does it, ha I can't think of a, another year where it's happened. Like I, in between I even remember the year that Stamkos scored 60. He was definitely the only one that year. Um, like, oh, yeah. he didn't do it or anything that year. Um, so, I, I mean, I think it would be great for the league, too, especially if you got two 60-goal scorers there. I'm going to say it's a fact just because it would be wonderful if it happened. Yeah, I, I'm trying to see if I can find this right now. I'm not seeing um, seasons with multi 60-goal scorers, but trying to as I try to find this here, uh, Rob, you think this is fact or fiction? So we have the Oilers have played 70 games. So we have 12 games left for him to score nine goals. Um, yeah. I'm going to go with fact, even though it's un more unlikely than likely, because what's going to happen is as he starts to approach the 60, they will do everything they possibly can to get him the 60. Uh, I noticed that. I mean, I, I bet Zach Hyman plus 125, terrible price to score a goal uh, in Ottawa on Sunday, purely because that was my handicap, which is like, they're going to try to get him the puck a million times. He had three grade A chances in the first period. He finally scored on the power play in the second period. So I think it's one of those things where, you know, you think about it, nine goals in 12 games. Sure, it can be done. It's probably unlikely. But as you start to get closer and closer to it, he's going to be out there for empty nets. He's going to be out there for everything that's possible to help get him a goal. So I'll say yes. I'll say fact. Um, and now he's got the, uh, you know, He's got the Andrew Berkshire, you know, bad juju working in his favor. He's definitely getting there. Yeah, definitely. agreed. Uh, Albert, you found something out for us here? Yeah, so when I said I don't think it happened last year, it did happen last year. It made David oh, my Pasternak, God. which, which yeah. neither of us really realized, too, at the time. I knew Pasternak did. did David scored 60 did. last year? McDavid had 153 points, 64 goals. Yeah, I, I I could I would have I never realized that David scored sixty four. I wouldn't goals have last either. Year. It's the quietest sixty four like goals. Yeah, 
Wow. I was trying to think of matches that I was like, I don't think he did it last year, but yeah, I didn't realize that either. The time before that was 96 with Yager and Lemieux. Mm. Mm. Yeah, there you go. Jordan saying there in the chat, Yager Lemieux 96. Um, yep. All right, there you go. If, if Zach uh, played, if Zach played back in 96, though, he could have scored 60. Oh, as well. No, no, that no don't do that shit to me. Don't. That's Johnny, not me. Don't bring me into that, Rob. <laughs> I don't need to take that criticism from people now. Uh, <laughs> How many beer league teams do you think it would take Moretto to score 60? We've got a new topic of discussion. I think uh, I think Moretto's a uh, shut down, stay at home, Hal Gill esque defenseman. At his current rate of five minutes per game, it would take him his entire life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a uh, hundred thousand, as Jordan says there. <laughs> yeah, that seems about <laughs> potentially. <right. laughs> Uh, all right, there you go. That's all, all for today's show. We appreciate everyone who tuned in. If you haven't already hit the like button, subscribe here to the channel, turn on notifications. As for best bets for today, we've got two of them. So quickly recapping here in the Boston-Tampa game, we're going to go under 6, minus 110. We are also going to take Brad Marchand over, or anytime goal scorer, excuse me, plus 250. Marchand, anytime goal scorer, plus 250. And we're going to put 0. 0.4 units on that one. So $40 to win 100 in that game. Those are our two best bets for today. If you do want to see our picks, you want to see how we've done throughout the entire season, you can head over to the Bet Stamp app in the Find Better section as Edgework HQ. And you know what? We are still up on the season. Not as good as we did last year, but we are still up on the season here so far. So hopefully we can clean things up down the stretch and get it back in the right direction as we get into playoffs. That's what you want to be doing. You don't want to be tailing off into the playoffs. You want to be building up at the right time. You don't want to peak too early. So that's what we're doing here on the Edgework Show, turning things around. Now, if you are looking for NFL betting, your NFL content, because you're, you're not done with other sports that are going on, and maybe you're not trying to check out the NBA or the MLB right now at 12 o'clock Eastern time here today over on the Forward Progress YouTube channel. We've got the boys coming up, Eric Eager, Fabian Sommer, George Sofidis, and our guy Eric Pauly hosting and talking about NFL rule changes affecting scoring and some of the uh, annual meetings that took place here over the last week or so in the NFL, breaking down everything that's going on you're going to want to check that out because maybe you'll find out some stuff that you didn't know was taking place for this upcoming season. So make sure to head on over to Forward Progress after this one coming up next. But guys, thanks so much for tuning in here today. Uh, Rob, Matt, thank you guys for taking the time to do this as always. Look forward to seeing Rob here uh, next week after this Marshawn bet hits. I think that'll be real good for the show. But appreciate everyone. Head on over to Forward Progress after this. Other than that, we'll see you back here tomorrow morning at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. Enjoy the two games tonight. Good luck on your bets.